Hey guys, I'm Titan Weasel with Titan Talks. I'm sorry for posting a little late this week, but my computer has been really hating me recently, and I don't know why. So, you're getting what I was going to post on Wednesday today. So, yeah. Warning, this video contained Titan's own opinions, mind-blowingly expensive bacon, a dead mammoth, and stupid people out the wazoo. Enjoy. And now... The continuing story of the world that's gone to the weasels. With your host, Titan Weasel. Good talk, my friends. It's Wednesday again, so it's time for Titan Talks. I'm Titan Weasel, your host, and I... I love you guys. All right, it's 6, 5, 13, a.k.a. it is... Uh, hold on. January, February, March, April, May, June. It's... No. Yeah, it's June the 5th, Wednesday of 2013. So let's get started. Well, I got some news for you guys this week. This is going to be some good stuff. Anyways, uh, our first topic today... Is earlier this week a uh, fight happened at a kindergarten graduation? Isn't that great? Eight were arrested this week, uh, this last week over in uh, I believe it was Cleveland, Ohio. Is that's what it says? They were arrested after a massive brawl starts over a spilled punch at a kindergarten graduation. Isn't that great? People are stupid as hell. Uh, two teenage girls apparently started hitting each other at the Michael R. White Elementary School, and their families joined in, Cleveland Police Commander Wayne Drummond said. The fight involved adults and minors as well. Entertaining, isn't that? I think so, and, uh, <laughs> People were uh, booked on charges of aggravated rioting. People are stupid. My God. Anyways, there's also... I also got a little bit of what the guy said for you, so here it is. Um, we received a call for a large fight. Actually, initially, for shots fired at Marco R. White School. The zone cars responded on scene. There were several, several people were fighting. They were separated and so forth, and based on our preliminary investigation, um, it started over something we believe to be very silly. Um, two young girls got in a fight. Their family members interceded on either side to help, and it started just a large fight. All right, so people were being stupid in Cleveland. Now for some guy news. Do you know what the most expensive bacon sandwich in the world costs? Do you know? Well, it's $235. That's right, $235 for the most expensive bacon sandwich in the world. You could probably go there if you have the money to, to go to Western England over to Shetlandham and go to Tangberry's, which is a you know higher up restaurant, but not quite. And spend $235 there or in a, today's exchange rate would be 150 pounds to buy yourself this sandwich. Reason why this sandwich is so expensive is that not only does you get, do you get fresh baked rolls on there and an egg eat bacon I don't know what that is bacon truffles truffle oil gold leaf gold dust and saffron which is the world record academy cast uh, the world record academy says that saffron by itself will cost you 50 pounds that's a lot of money that's almost a hundred dollars here um, but 
Black truffles is a type of mushroom that is very hard to find and very expensive. That is also uh, uh, like 50 bucks right there. And the truffle oil is even as expensive. That's 50 bucks right there. So then plus gold leaf and gold dust. You're eating freaking gold. Gold. Yeah, so that's that. Uh, there's also other expensive dishes that you can find around the world, like the most expensive burger in the world, not just bacon. There's no bacon on this sandwich, so it doesn't count as the most expensive sandwich. You can have, uh, head over to the floor in Las Vegas and get their Floor Burger 5000. Do you want to know why it's called 5000? That's right, it's $5,000. Yeah. I wouldn't spend that much on even on a I wouldn't spend that much on a burger. Not even no matter how good it is. I'd rather just go over to McDonald's and get myself a Big Mac. You could also go to Norman's, which I forget where uh that is in New York's like Parker Meridian Hotel, which is a very expensive hotel. And you can, if you got a thousand bucks, you might be able to eat breakfast. A zillion dollar lobster frittata, which costs you $1,000. And then you also go to Serendipity, which is Serendipity 3, which I have no idea where that is. Ah, it's, I think it's in Paris. I don't know. Um, You can spend $1,000 to get the Grand Opulent Sunday, which consists of ice cream, gold leaf, Caviar and some other nasty crap. I'm not spending a thousand dollars on a darn Sunday. I'd rather just go over to like uh Dairy Queen. <laughs> or you could go over to Barclay Prime. That's a great place. If you're trying to pinch your pennies, don't go there because everything in L.A. is expensive. Head over to uh, Los Angeles and go to Barclay Prime and grab yourself a cheesesteak for only a hundred bucks. Not cool, man. Alright, so that's it for food news. Uh, if you're looking for more of that stuff, yeah, good luck. I ain't paying for that. Interesting world news time. Strange world news. So let's get started. All right. Two maids get 10 years for a thousand and a thousand lashes for sorcery. This is going on in Saudi Arabia. Uh, these two women were maids uh, at housemaids at this at this one guy's place. And they were found to have talismans. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're practicing witch witchcraft, but the Gulf Kingdom by the sea decided that, hey, they're practicing witchcraft. I'm going to get them in trouble. Because he has a stick up his ass. So religious police came and did their job-ish. I don't know what their job is. And took him away to the courts. And the courts found him guilty and put him in jail for 10 years plus a thousand lashes each. Now, they're lucky to get pulled off with just 10 years and a thousand lashes. Because in Saudi Arabia, they could have been beheaded. They are lucky, if you ask me. Um... <laughs> That's it for that one, though. I, uh, I'm not reading more into that one. That one's pretty bad. And now, it's time for a new segment that I like to call Bad Ass Science. That's right, it's time for Bad Ass Science. So stick around, I got some videos, some pictures to show you. In Siberia, they have found that... Uh, a uh, the blood of a 10,000 year old Siberian woolly mammoth. Isn't that awesome? I'm serious, dude. Look at this picture. This is so freaking awesome. If you don't think this is awesome, there is something wrong with you. 
what they're going to be doing with this blood is that they're going to be studying it to see actually how much more they can find out about the woolly mammoths and why they died. Why they all just died off. There's no point, really, to why they died off. Uh, uh, Mr. C uh, Simon Grigoriev, our uh, Russian Siberian guy, says we were really surprised to find mammoth blood and muscle tissue. He also says that uh, because of the upper torso and two legs, which were in the soil, were not on by prehistoric mo and modern predators, that they almost did not survive. But, despite this, he hails it as the best preserved mammoth in the history of paleontology. Paleontology, by the way, is, a su is the study of extremely dead things. Like dinosaurs and woolly mammoths. I'm actually surprised that they were able to find this thing in that much snow and ice. Welcome to Siberia. Siberia, uh, they have believed that this creature may have died by freezing to death and then stayed frozen until th they have found this thing's blood. Awesome. Now, they believe that the uh, meat of the woolly mammoth is freezer burned, so they will not be cooking it. Okay? Uh, that's, it. that's it for this part. That's it. God, badass... Badass science right here. It's time for our block discussion. That's right, guys. It's block discussion time. So leave in your comments below what you think about this. Native American feather sparks graduation debate School f on schools. Tough rules for grads. This girl was denied her diploma until she... Uh, uh, paid a, a one thousand dollar fine for wearing a American, um, a Native American eagle feather in her hair, which represents pride and honor. I am Native American, so I know what this is. Um, do you think that is discrimination towards people? I think it is. <clears throat> Not only that, but she also states that it's worth every penny of it so that she can, you know, show who she is. Not only that, but um, <sighs> this is ridiculous. Not only that, but also in Cincinnati, high school senior Anthony Cornish was denied a diploma after his family's excessive cheers apparently disrupted the graduation ceremony at Mount Healthy High. I will be holding your diploma at the main office, read a letter from the principal, Marlon Stiles Jr. Due to the excess cheering of your guests displayed during the roll call. He then demanded 20 hours of community service from Cornist, who told news station, I did nothing wrong except for walk across that stage. This guy's pissed. I can't blame him. When it comes to students expressing their First Amendment rights, dis disciplining students by not allowing them to graduate is excessive and unacceptable. Gabe Rotman said this, uh, and he is a legislative counsel for the ACLU. And not only that, it is pun not only is that punishment disproportionate, disproportionate to the crime, but the schools are missing out an opportunity to teach students the value of this freedom of speech. Another example for what's going on over there is Caitlin Newtbar, the valedictorian of Oklahoma's Prague High School, who dared include the word hell in her speech. As a result, the school held back her diploma and demanded an apology. She earned that diploma. She completed the state curriculum. Her father, David Newtbar, told 
K4TV News. In four years, she never made a B. She got straight A's and has a 4.0 the whole way through. I'd be pissed too. Attorney Jason Bach, whose education litigation group represents students in Las Vegas, Chicago, and Austin, Texas, attributes this sort of zero-tolerance discipline, which has been increased, increasing in the recent years, to institutional arrogance. Creating rules without thinking through how they will apply to individual situations, he told Shine, uh, provides an easy out for administrators. It's convenient for the schools, he said, who won't have to make judgment calls if they have a rule that can apply brainlessly. Our schools are losing their brains and they are jacking off with power. This is ridiculous. All right, guys, you put in the comments below what you think. On one hand, they are going way too far. That is really stupid. Or, on the other hand, are they doing the right thing? Me, personally, I say no. They are not doing the right thing, and they are really jacking off with their power. This is just really stupid. They're teaching these kids that, basically, the way that you're doing this, they're teaching these kids that there is no freedom of speech. There is. Look it up. It's in the Bill of Rights. It's one of the it's the first amendment to the Bill of Rights. There is a freedom of speech. Now, yeah. Anyways, that's it for this week. No one is naming my cat, so I got to name him myself. His name is now Leo Pluridon. Leo Pluridon, like the dinosaur. So, that is his name this week. Next week, uh, you guys gotta put in something that I can read. So, do it. Or die. No, not really. Don't die. Um, that's it. Stop looking at me. Oh, yeah. That's right. Guys. You guys stay beautiful. Because nobody loves you except for me. That is right. I love you guys. Now get out of here. So that's right.